I want to welcome you to part two of the cost behavior. Uh, this is going to be doing some actual calculations, a little, a little bit of calculations for it. Uh, this is for the mixed costs, and remember mixed costs have elements of both fixed and variable in them. And what we have to do is separate those elements out. We have to have fixed and variable separate from each other. So the first method we're going to talk about how to do this is the scatter graph or scatter plot method. Now this we're not going to illustrate because you, it's kind of an S judgment call. It's easier to do on graph paper also. But what you look at is the activity as your x-axis and your cost as your y-axis. You plot the data points that you have and then draw a line that best estimates where half of the activity is above and half is below. And then the slope is your variable cost and the, where it intersects the y-axis is the fixed cost. What we're going to be doing is the high-low method. There's another method of doing this. And on the high-low method, we look at the activity levels. And we look at the highest activity and the lowest activity. That's the outliers. And the outliers just simply mean something that's way off base. Okay, so we see this activity level 600 and 200, because I have those highlighted already. And at the 600 is 9,000, and this one is 3,500. So up here, what we would have then is the, I'm going to put variable costs is equal to the 9,000 minus the 3,500, which is my activities as associated with those, divided by the 600 minus the 200, which is the highest and lowest activities. So what that equals then is 5,500 divided by 400, which is equal to 1,375. So that's my variable cost, 1,375. Now, for the variable costs, you take the total costs minus your variable costs times the number of units. Okay, so the fixed costs, I'm going to have fixed costs is equal to, this is y is 9,000, because that deals with minus 1375 times the 600. So that's equal to 9,000 minus 8,250, which is equal to $750. That's my fixed cost. Now, I did this side just to show it doesn't matter which way, which data points you, equal, you do. So we'll use the low side equal. This one is 3,500 minus 1,375 times 200 okay so we have 3500 minus 2750 or 750 so you get the same results no matter what now what we're after is this equation here y is equal to why is my total cost y is equal to well my fixed cost is 750 plus 1375 times x. So what I use then, if I need to estimate what my costs are going to be, I'll say, okay, what would be my cost at 420 hours? I put x in for, I put 420 in for x, and then solve for the equation. Okay. Method of least squares. This is a linear regression analysis. <clears throat> now, if you don't have linear regression, I'm going to show you a shortcut of how to do this. So it's uh, the slope is your variable cost. So you have equal slope. Okay. The known y's. So what you do is just highlight the y's. X's. You highlight the x's. And you come up with the answer. 12.46. Now, the problem you have to see is that it's an awful large, large number. So what we'll do is to make it better is you'll use the round function. Okay. And that's how you come up with it now. So you can see this see this more clearly. What I've done before, what I'll do is if you click on all these numbers with the F4 key, okay, 
and then you do this copy you put it over here and you paste it you get the same answer it looks like but if you come over here and put a apostrophe in front of it you get the formula okay that's the variable cost <clears throat> now if you want the fixed cost to do the same thing why I will just put the round function in here and this is the intercept though okay knowing y's again this is where it intercepts the y-axis at and x's okay comma 2 and that gives you 962.43 and again if we do the absolute values again we can do the same thing we did before that's the F4 key in case you wonder what I'm pressing. Okay, then we can copy, put it over here, paste, and the apostrophe, and that gives us that formula. Okay, so what we're after here though is y is equal to in this case 962.43 plus 12.46x. Okay, that's the equation we're after. Now you notice the equations are a little different. This is 750, 1375. This is 962. But you know, the thing is you look at, this was a lot quicker, but if these are really spread out, these only take into account, the problem you have with the high-low method, it only takes into account two data points. Whereas the method of least squares takes into all the data points. And that's why it's a better formula. Okay, so here what we have is I said, well, we want the company to find out what would it be under 420 hours. Now, this is only valid between 200 and 600 hours, though, because after the, anything above or below that, we're not sure what the cost is going to be doing because we don't have those data points. So what we have in this one, we have, we want to do the total cost. So we have Y is equal to 962.43 plus 1246 times, well, we said X, and that's 420. Okay, so we have equal 962.43 plus 12.46 times 420, and that's your estimated cost, $6,195.63. Okay, and that's how you would do this without the regression analysis. Now, Excel does allow a regression analysis, and I don't have it on my machine. It's an add-in, and I couldn't get it added in at this point, so I'm, gonna, I'm still working on it. But what you have with regression analysis, I know it's in your book, um, and I'll go through some of the highlights of it. The intercept, where it says the intercept, that's your fixed cost. The X variable is your variable cost. The adjusted R squared, there's a measure R, R squared and adjusted R squared. We like using the adjusted R squares because that takes into account the data points that you have. That's your degree of confidence. The closer, think of that as a percentage. So if it comes up to 80.845672, that's almost an 85% confidence that these numbers are fairly accurate. Okay, so that's kind of your confidence level. The closer to one it is, because one is up equal to 100%, the better the correlation. Now, to get 100% means every single data point has to be on the line. Well, that's not going to happen. So you want it to be fairly close. Okay. You also have a standard error, and that's how much it varies. 620. I'm going to assume ours is 620. And uh, and what I want to know is also if we want a 95% confidence level, we have to use the T tables. Okay. Now, in the T table, you need a degree of confidence. In our example, we had 10 data points. Well, 10 data points, okay, so that's where we've got the 10. So you take the number of observations minus the number of variables. Well, we have two variables, so that's 8. So our degrees of freedom would be 8. So on the table for the T, the T table, you look at 8 degrees of freedom, and we want a 90% confidence level, and I got the 95 there. And at, at the 80% level, it's 1.860. Is 80 percent so what we have this one up here is what we did earlier we want to know 
what would be our range if we want a 90% confidence level that it's going to fall in here? Okay, so what we have, the range is equal to, um, well, first of all, we have to basically, we're going to do, um, do, 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 do. Nope, about that form. This formula right, where's it at? Yeah. We want that formula right there. Okay. I'm just going to copy it down because that's what we want. I just want to redo it down here so you see it. Okay. Now for the 98% confidence level, we would take 6,195.63 plus 1.86 times the standard error of 620. Okay. So I'll just do it here so we can 95.63 times 1.86 times 620 uh, 6.195 63 1.86 times 620 okay so that's that one and this one is 6195.63 1.86 times 620. Okay, so equal 6195.63 times 1.86 times 620. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> Minus, sorry. Okay, that's better. I did the same thing there too, didn't I? Plus. I said plus. Okay. Yeah. So this is 6195.63 plus 1.86 times 620. And this is 6195.63 minus 1.86 times 620. So the range that we would look at would be 7348.83. Through 5042.43, and that is our 90% confidence level. Okay, so that 90% confidence level that's the range we would look at. I know it's quite a big, it's, it's quite a difference there, but um, that's that gives us 90% of the time is going to fall within that parameters. Okay, so that's chapter three. Hope that helps, and um, see you in chapter four.